Hello, welcome to my channel, Bow and Arrow Tarot. Today we're going to get right into the March uh, abundance and career reading for Virgo. All right, Virgos, you guys are up. <clears throat> we're going to start with pulling out your uh, animal spirits. This is going to be for March. Um, and Virgo, this is just going to be a look into one sort of scenario, right, for, you know, maybe only one Virgo out there, okay? So this reading may not be for you, right? We know that not all readings can be for all people. So if it doesn't resonate for you, then just let it go. <clears throat> and I appreciate um, all of you for watching. So let's get right into it. So far, Virgo has had quite an interesting time with career and abundance in 2020. I've only looked at January, and then you can always check out your 2020 outlook, which is also linked in the description. Now, we have Dolphin. And we have the firefly well very interesting animal spirits to have for a uh, abundance and career reading dolphin of course is all about healing and the firefly is all about great bursts of inspiration coming in let's pull the rest of your cards before we actually take a look into those animal spirits a little bit deeper March. <clears throat> and of course, go into the description if you want to check out your weekly outlooks, their general outlooks, or your weekly love outlook. This is the cosmic deck that I'm using for these readings for this new series. It's my new deck. I love this deck. There is an unboxing video for that. I'm going to try and link that also. Alright, so... All right, Virgo, you have straight out in the center, King of Swords, covered by the Chariot. All right, the devil is in your focus this month, and in the back of your mind, you have a th Four of Swords, which is all about strategy. Eight of Wands coming in, and the Hanged Man going out. All right, guys, bottom of the deck. Ah, there we go. We have the Princess of Wands. Well, she is all about overcoming fear in a situation, being able to follow your heart. <clears throat> all right, so let's get right into those animal spirits. Dolphin and firefly. Well, the dolphin is, of course, a water animal spirit, and the firefly is an air animal spirit, which you can tell by the alchemical symbols at the top of the deck. The dolphin um, is, this, when the dolphin spirit comes into our life, it brings in, it can bring in blessings. Uh, it brings in healing, right? The spirit of the dolphin is so uh, tremendously capable of sort of uh, healing in all ways. These are masters of healing arts. Uh, a lot of times people who resonate with dolphin's energy they may not even realize how profound their energy is or how strong their energy is. Um, <clears throat> the spirit of the dolphin is something that is so unique um, that oftentimes when you come across somebody who's resonating with this energy, it's like your whole day can change, your whole mood can change, you can suddenly feel literally a little bit lighter. Um, they work at the level of the spirit, right? Um, but they work on healing emotional trauma because it is a water element. So there's, although there is the, uh, the, the harnessing sort of the power of the spirit, the connection to the spirit, it is all to sort of heal the emotional sides of ourselves. The firefly is associated with great bouts of inspiration, um, yet they are very fleeting, right? When the... Um, firefly spirit comes into our lives, it comes in very quickly. Um, and so a lot of times um, the spirit of the fly, firefly reminds us that we have to be ready when inspiration comes in because a lot of times it comes in too quickly, 
right? It just comes in so fast that if we're not attuned to it or if we're not open for it, uh, we can even miss, you know, the idea that's coming to us or the inspiration that's coming to us. So now is the time for you, Virgo, to be very sort of open and receptive and aware uh, to the to the to the things that are going on around you, right? Inspiration can come in a lot of different forms. It can come in seeing something or hearing something, making a connection in something, whatever the case may be, right? Um, but it is certainly a time in our lives where we need to really be uh, aware and paying attention. Now, at the center of your reading. I'm going to get back to the Princess of Wands. Center of your reading, Virgo, very nice indeed. You have the King of Swords and the Chariot. So I'm going to say for a lot of you, as far as career and abundance is concerned, this month is going to be, and certainly this month, March, when I say March, is certainly going to be all about preparing a plan, a strategy going forward. You have an idea. Um, and you're trying to sort of formulate that idea and, and sort of uh, get everything sort of in the right place, in the right position. There is definitely a forward strategy that you have. And it's all about creating a certain vision that you have, right? Because the King of Swords is all about that. He represents sort of absolutely clear thinking. He represents also being extremely honest with himself and focused on a task at hand, right? Um, he is the King of the Mind, right? Swords are all associated with the mind and clear thinking and thought and communication. And so I wouldn't be surprised if this reading is for someone who is... In that field, maybe you are um, an inventor of some sort. You may be someone who works in communications. You may be someone who works in a field uh, that just requires a lot of sort of uh, technical thought, clear thought. Um, and it's strong and it feels to me, again, with the spirit of the firefly coming in as inspiration, uh, this is definitely feels to me also like someone who is a bit of a creator, an inventor, uh, or someone who is in a field where inspiration is what's needed this month, right? You have the clear thought anyway in terms of the King of Swords. You have the clarity there. Now this sort of creative process through, through inspiration is coming in. And so this is where we get this inventiveness, you know, that somebody has. Uh, when you're creating a new product, right? Now, when I say inventiveness, this can be anything. You could be creating a new app. You could be creating software. You could be, be creating a new product or uh, you could even be creating a center. Maybe you're working on a totally different type of field. You may be in the field of sort of uh, some kind of creative uh, field, like painting or sculpture or music, right? Um, and yet what you're working on this March is all, it all requires a lot of clear thinking in that area, planning, uh, getting your ideas together, and there's inspiration coming in. Right, for how you want to do it, how you want to accomplish it. Because your goal, you're covered with a chariot. So this is also certainly another reading for Virgo who has a very long-term plan. This is also something associated with a feeling of what you've always wanted to do with your life. So it can certainly be a career path or a business path that you're finding yourself at on where you're like, this is something I always wanted to do. This is what I've always wanted to work in, or this is the field I've always wanted to be in. And a lot of this March period is all about you um, starting off that path because the chariot <clears throat> oftentimes can indicate... Um, preparing the path or being on the path, right? Here we have with this deck, it's much, the card is much more emphasizing the actual journey. In the traditional deck, the chariot is standing still. And, um, and there is, and there are many sort of, this is with tarot, we have a lot of different layers to the cards in terms of interpreting. With the traditional deck, the emphasis of the chariot is much more on preparing the path, right? Uh, before the chariot engages, because once it goes down the road, it's all about the road that you set for it, right? It doesn't kind of veer off the road, right? It stays on the road. Now here, we have the same thing. The chariot, clearly, it's again, it's a very symbolic. You can see 
the um, the horses are definitely on a particular path. There's a few little obstacles here, right? But again, just when we think about like you know, uh, you know these movies. You'd say you watch you know the movies we used to watch where people were ride horses and carriages and stuff. You know, generally they wanted to take the easiest path or they wanted to take perhaps the quickest path, whatever their objective was, right? Here we see the chariot much more in motion, and so. Um, <clears throat> here we're talking about much more the actual journey, you know, really concentrating on the journey. Um, and this is what it feels like for you right now, that you're like on the journey. And of course, along the way, uh, the road is going to sometimes be very quick. Sometimes it's going to be very cumbersome with lots of obstacles, right? But you are on the road. And the one thing with the chariot, regardless of, of what interpretation you're, you're gleaning from it, um, it is always the same in terms of, uh, this is your path, right? It's always still about the path, whether the path is preparation or the path is one you're on now that you're experiencing. It's all about the actual path that we have in life and making sure that that path is what we want in our lives. This is how we want to live our lives doing this. Very, very strong, very ambitious. Now, we have the devil and the four of swords. And <clears throat> it's interesting because I just got done your sister sign. And uh, I believe she also had a four of swords in a position. I'm not sure where, but I do believe there was a four of swords that may have shown up. But in any case, the devil is here. Uh, in your conscious, in your focus position of four of swords is sort of in the back of your mind. So we're talking very much here about the devil in terms of um, creative um, expression, right? Uh, because the devil is, there's two sides to him. The one side, of course, is that, you know, if we don't allow ourselves to sort of connect our creative desires to a higher purpose, right? An ultimate goal, like one with the chariot, right? So here, again, like I said earlier, the chariot is all about reaching that really, that, that ultimate goal we have for our lives. If our creative communication is not is sort of connected to a higher goal, right? A, maybe a higher spiritual goal or some a moral goal, right? Then we descend into the darker side of the devil card, which is sort of instant gratification, right? Um, codependency. It can be addiction sometimes because then we can become much more a slave to our passion, a slave to our desires. Um, and so sometimes it depends on the spread. Here we're talking, I think, for you, um, this month is, you require a higher level of sort of expression with your creative desires. You may be a Virgo, right, that is extremely talented in a certain area, but you may have a certain, you may be a little bit too sensitive or too sensitively attuned to that so that when you are unhappy or when you are not um, when you are not feeling fulfilled with your work, you can possibly descend into sort of a darker side of yourself, right? Descend into sort of addiction or codependency. And so it's very important for you always to be able to feel sort of like fulfilled in your career or your business or fulfilled in your creative outlet, making sure that you are, you know, putting your energies there and that you are staying true to yourself, right? And that you're not allowing people to stifle that either. If you're working in a creative field, you know, I'm sure you will find, and if you're resonating with this reading, you will find yourself that every time you feel hampered or stifled or constricted or you feel pressured, right, you don't do well, right? I imagine this, this, this reading is for a Virgo who doesn't do well under those circumstances and you may be finding yourself unable to have the inspiration that you normally have or even the clarity that you normally have because you just don't work well in certain environments. And so it's very important for you this March to be careful that you maintain the proper environment for yourself. So in the back of your mind, you have the Four of Swords. And so you're also this month feeling as though like uh, you're needing to be quite strategic about something, right? So again, there could be an issue, right, in your career or your business where there may be forces that you're dealing with um, 
that are bringing negative aspects to the environment, right? And this is what you're battling here with the devil, right? It almost feels as though, let me see if I can give you an example of what I'm talking about. Um, if you are, let's say you're in a very creative field, right? And you do some kind of art, you know, and you're working as part of, um, either a group, you know, an art group or a company, you may be in a certain department in an art company or whatever, whatever the case may be, right? And there are uh, forces within the company. They could be individuals or they could be individuals who are expounding certain rules or whatever, or maybe even a certain idea about how you guys should be working, right? And it could be that to you, all of, you know, these energies that these people, and they may be the ones who are perhaps supervisors or in charge. They may have a certain amount of authority. And so this definitely is a bit of a battle, but whatever it is that they're doing about whatever it is or energy that they're bringing to the environment is stifling the creative process. Right. And, um, and it's a very difficult work environment for you and you finding yourself not able to sort of work at the level or produce at the level you want to produce. And so in the back of your mind, uh, you will, you would be resonating with this four of swords in a sense that you're going to be thinking very strategically this month, this mar month of March, this month of March about how to sort of. Uh, get around that, right? Either how to deal with these energies, whether it is to meet them head on and have a discussion about it, go above their heads and talk to somebody else, or if it's a different way you need to handle it or a different way you need to handle the people involved, whatever the strategy is, right? Four of Swords is a, is a uh, card about really thinking ahead to sort of uh, not only maintain your stability that you have, but increase your stability and make the right move going forward. Clearly, you're in a situation where uh, you need to think about what you're doing, right? Because certain decisions have certain sort of uh, consequences. And in the front of your mind, you're dealing with this devil energy around you, right? And like I said, you know, um, the devil energy, what I'm talking about earlier about this this feeling of having sort of your... Uh, creative outlets stifled or constricted in some way or just adulterated in some ways that you so that you can't use them fully that can often come in a lot of different forms right that can come in the form of your environment or the people you're around right um uh, or the rules you've agreed to work by, right, or what have you. It could be somebody who's bringing negative energy in, right, and they're constantly, like, sort of messing with the process, you know, and then at the process breaks down. It's like you have to start to get the rhythm all over again. And, um, and so, again, this is what I mean also by fighting the devil, and a lot of times you have to fight that energy to make sure that your outlets are open, that you can express yourself the best way possible. If you continue to allow that energy sort of to affect your creative process or your creative environment, this is when you then fall into the same toxicity. And then we get back to sort of, you know, the devil energy in terms of what we associate with it, right? Uh, perhaps, you know, uh, turning to addiction, turning to an alcohol or turning to something to make the whole thing feel better or, you know, getting stuck in a codependent relationship with somebody who's constantly bringing this energy in. And so this month, there definitely needs to be some healing as well because there is some kind of, um, I want to say, not necessarily negative, but there's definitely some kind of opposing energy to yours that it's coming into your environment that you're having to sort of out-strategize, right? That you're sort of having to out-maneuver in some way in order to maintain the path that you're on, in order to maintain your objective. Eight of Wands comes in and the Hanged Man. Now, so the Eight of Wands, interestingly enough, coming into the month, um, it's interesting because you have a lot of mixed messages. The Eight of Wands is talks about when you have a lot of sort of... Uh, messages or energy coming into you, right? Um, 
It could be people who may be saying one thing and doing something else, right? They may be telling you one thing and then they're acting in a completely different manner. Or it could just be so many people uh, coming into you, so many people giving you their ideas and their two cents. And it's just, it can tend to be an overload of data, <laughs> right? Whether that, and sometimes this, I call this my viral card as well. It can indicate going viral in a lot of ways, right? But um, it is an overload of data coming in. And this can be a energy, I think, that is really affecting this whole dynamic that I'm talking about. And so for some of you, the secret to dealing with this is going to be putting in some healthy boundaries. Because eight is the number for boundaries. And eight of wands indicates that this is happening because the right boundaries have not been put in place or enforced. Right. And so when you put boundaries in place and you enforce them, then people with this type of energy or any kind of negativity or anybody who has an opposing energy to what is conducive for you, which we would sort of associate with the devil, they can't really come in close enough to affect you. And so this is why I say one of the biggest, uh, you know, one of the biggest um preventions from negativity coming into you is to set healthy boundaries and to enforce those boundaries, you know? And you'd be surprised how many times people have boundaries and they either just don't enforce them, they just let people overstep because they, it's like, well, what do you do? Well, there, there's ways to do it, right? You just don't allow them in, right? You don't allow them to have the energy or you don't give them the energy. And so Eight of Wands talks about really sort of being very strong and very clear and decisive to decide, you know, what you're allowing in, what you consider to be important and what you're keeping out because it really doesn't serve you it's not important for you and you really don't need to be associated with it and this could be people giving their opinions or this could be uh you know people like you said people saying one thing and then acting a different way I, you put up a you know you, then you keep those people at arm's length or you certainly have you know the awareness to know that you just can't you can't trust them or you can't tell them everything you know these these are some of the boundaries that you have to put in place right you don't have certain conversations with them or you don't trust them with certain information or what have you right you know whenever somebody is proving to you know uh give you mixed signals right or when you have people who are just constantly coming in and trying to give you their Im input or give you their advice or suck, you know, sort of suck your energy. They're constantly coming in and trying to ask you to help them out. All of this is all about setting boundaries and it's going to be one of the biggest things that you can do this month to help deal with this energy that you're focusing on in the front of your mind. Again, King of Swords is also about being extremely, extremely honest with yourself and the rest of the world. And it's also also, he talks about um, he him requiring complete honesty from those around him. So just not tolerating anybody lying, or you know, uh, you know, even gossiping. You know, no lying, not gossiping, not sort of back. You know, any kind of petty negative uh, communication is just not tolerated, you know, whether it's petty or whether it goes all the way up to like lying, you know, even little white lies are not tolerated by the King of Swords. And this is one of the necessary things this month. And it's certainly how you're resonating. I think you're going to be feeling this month that you're, whatever this issue is you have at work or in your business, you're absolutely now ready to face it head on. And if you feel as though that there's some parts of it that, you know, maybe you're to blame for or maybe are as a result of your past decisions, you're willing to face up to that too. The King of Swords is able to be honest with himself as well. And so you come out of the month with Hanged Man energy and the Hanged Man talks about an awakening. And I think you have a real awakening this month about, you know... What has led to this scenario? What has led to this situation? And I'm not saying that it's such a bad situation, but I am saying that in March for Virgo, you're very much focusing on a particular problem, right? That has gotten to a point where you're having to strategize and really think about how to make it better and get back on that path the way you want to be, right? Dealing with a lot of energies here with the Eight of Wands, a lot of information coming in that you're going to have to sift through, right? And so what I mean to say is that with this hanged man, there's an awareness this month 
of uh, whatever actions led up to this? You know, where were you slipping up until now or where did you maybe not necessarily put as much in intention or attention uh, into, right, to have to have sort of avoided this as much as possible, right? And I'm not saying that this could have been completely avoided. I'm just saying that whatever realization is coming in this month, it's going to be a personal realization about this situation. And those realizations almost always also sort of uh, show us what impact we had on the situation, you know, because the hangman is realization that comes in after a period of time where we haven't really been putting a lot of effort in, right? You can see there that he's kind of just hanging there like, eh, I'm just going to sit here and meditate. You know, I'm not going to put a lot of effort in. And it's not really so A lot of times hangman is, is sort of interpreted as someone who's stuck. It's not really so much that the person is stuck. It's just that they don't feel like moving. You know, they haven't felt inspired. And a lot of times the awakening, because you can see with the halo, right, of enlightenment, a lot of times the awakening for a hanged man is exactly that. Something has come in and inspired them. And so, again, I think perhaps for some of you, there may have been a period of time where you were uninspired. There may have been a period of time that you needed to do some healing from something with regard to your career or your your feeling of being able to do you know achieve your your goals right but this month firefly is the spirit of inspiration and it's inspiration that wakes the hanged man up and makes and makes him now want to do more makes him now want to move out of his sort of status quo position and put his best foot forward right and so this is why i make that distinction that it's not even so much that that he's stuck because stuck implies that you couldn't move if you wanted to Right. Um, it's not that it's more that, you know, this there was a time where you just didn't want to. You didn't want to do anything else. You just didn't feel inspired. Now we have the princess of wands here talking certainly about overcoming fear. Uh, the princess is the same as the page. And so with all the princesses and the pages of any suit, we're talking about uh, overcoming the initial fear of that suit. And you can see here really on uh, the expression on her face. Yeah, she may be a little bit apprehensive, but there is a determined look on her face there of like, look, I'm going to follow my heart. And right now, um, this is the most important thing. And I think that um, it could have been that for some of you, you weren't inspired to move forward because maybe there was a little bit of fear there of following what your real passion was. And again, there seems to have been some healing that needed to go on. And with that dolphin energy, it is happening. It can also feel very much like healing the company or healing the business, right? For some of you, you may be um, running a business or you may be working in a company that requires a little bit of healing. And that can happen too when an environment, a work environment has become quite negative, you know, and quite stifling, etc. All right, let's pull out your clarity cards, and then we're going to call this a reading for Virgo for March Abundance. Just remember to be extremely honest and that there's going to be a lot of uh, spirit of the dolphin, meaning a lot of spiritual healing going on this month through the changes that you're making uh, in this area of your life, Virgo. All right, you have Eight of Swords. So there's your interference that I was talking about, your negative energy, very toxic, and the Hermit. So keeping to yourself is definitely going to be part of the strategy uh, for fixing some of this devil energy that is coming in. Knight of Cups and the Hierophant. Wow. Okay, bottom of the deck, we have Ten of Swords. Well, it's going to be behind you soon, right? Because the Ten of Swords is definitely the end of a period. It's a period of, it's called a card for ruin in the soft deck because oftentimes we find a situation has gone beyond the point of repair. Our ego and everything that has happened to it has gone beyond the point of repair and what happens is that it is now ruined and something new needs to come out this is why this is completion and it's just like too much everything finally it's been overload the last you know it's the it's the hair that broke the camel's back right or the straw that broke the camel's back 
Um, I always think of a hair because it's so late. But the straw that broke the camel's back. And so we're talking about the old you is now ruined. Um, it's done and dead. And there's a new ego arising from the end of the struggle. And the things that you've gone through before that used to knock you down and hurt you before, oftentimes with a ten of swords, this new you that comes out of the ashes, basically, can't be hurt by the same sort of um, swords, right? The same sort of events or the same sort of... Uh, energies because you've learned how to deal with them now here is your eight of swords coming over this devil energy and like i said earlier this is very much all of this feels like uh toxicity you can see there it's a card for interference eight of swords is um you know duplicitous people who just uh People who can't move, you know, they can't make any kind of healthy decisions at all because of the way they think. You can't get through to them because they think they're always right. They don't make room for anybody else's opinion. Yet at the same time, they constantly uh, fail. They constantly find themselves alienated from the world around themselves. And because they feel like they're always right they then believe that it's everybody else's fault. It's a, such a toxic energy. This is the person who will gaslight you. This is the person who will play the victim card over and over and over again, even though it is their own behavior that puts them in that position, or it's their own behavior that alienates them from other people around them, but they will constantly blame everyone else. They will not take responsibility for their decisions or actions. And they find, and they expect, and they really definitely believe that everybody else is responsible for their inability to move or take action. It's very toxic energy, and that's for some of you exactly why I was saying there is some negativity there in your office, in your career, in your business. This feels like office shit, honestly, in a lot of ways to me. In any case, uh, the Hermit is coming out over the Four of Swords. Well, this is your card, Virgo. Right. The hermit is your card. And of course, this is uh, coming in just to let you know that part of your best strategy this month is to absolutely remain to yourself, remain true to yourself. Um, walk a solitary path. Some of you may be caught up in some kind of uh, office sort of or work related sort of uh, dynamic, social dynamic that has got you caught up in its sort of mess. If I were you, I would extract myself from it. I mean, you see the hermit is there. And, you know, to come in over the Four of Swords, which is all about strategy, finding the right strategy moving forward, we definitely want you to use the strategy of the hermit, which is not only following your own inner light and uh, what you believe to be right, because the hermit is about finding his, his or her spiritual truth, right? It's a path that we walk, and that's why... Uh, it's a solitary path because it's about finding our own truth and who we are and what we believe in, right? It's, it's about finding our own sage within us. Uh, sometimes it can represent a teacher coming in. Uh, but here I think it is very much a case of you uh, following that type of, uh, adding that to your strategy, you know, for your decision-making process, right? Some of you could very well be that a healer, has come into your life because the hermit and the spirit of the dolphin does have certain things in common in the sense that if the, the hermit can represent a teacher who has come into your life, and teachers can be healers in a lot of ways, right? Uh, a sage that has come into your life that has already walked that path for himself and understands and, and wants to show you the way. This can be as well. And so for some of you Virgos who are in this situation, you may indeed be getting some help from the outside also on how to move forward with this strategy. But it's going to be from somebody who's extremely wise and it's going to be from somebody who isn't, you know, not not necessarily in this area when we're talking about abundance of career, not necessarily on the surface the most likely teacher, right? Knight of Cups is coming in over that Eight of Wands. So this could indicate that there is a love connection here that has interfered, that is part of this interference because somebody is trying to offer a cup of love and this is impacting... Uh, the mixed messages that I'm talking about. And so, again, this could be a love dynamic that you have at work that has somehow turned toxic or gotten out of hand. And so, again, you need to put boundaries in place. If you don't want this Knight of Cups coming into you 
or if it's you going into someone else, you know, I don't think it is. I think this Knight of Cups is someone who's trying to sort of woo you or maybe sort of court you or there's something going on there with uh, a love connection or someone wanting to make a love connection that is all a part of this Eight of Swords energy where you're feeling like, look, I can't deal with all of this. Put your boundaries in place with this person. And again, the hero fan comes out to clarify the hanged man. And so here we find, again, commitment, right? Commitment to your purpose, to your higher purpose. Now, the second, the first five, the hero fan, or the major arcana, the second five, the 15, is the devil. So the devil and the hero fan are generally two sides of the same essence. The devil, we find an internal power struggle between, you know, reaching higher and descending down to, you know, uh, baser, negative, sort of uh, toxic energy, right? And it's sort of an internal power struggle. With the Hierophant, we don't have an internal power struggle because we are completely committed to our moral code and our moral center. And this is going to help you. And again, the Hierophant is another sign of a teacher possibly coming in. And with this Dolphin, again, I feel like for some of you, this is a big learning month. And you may be meeting people who are helping you through this by awakening you or, or uh, this people, there, there may be people or influences coming into your life that's really helping this process of awakening for you, right? And realizing the path you have to follow, remaining true to yourself and sort of remaining true to your beliefs, right? Um, and being 100% committed to them so that you don't have the same struggle that's going on up here. All right, guys, I'm going to call it. This is your reading for March for my lovely Virgos in the area of abundance and career. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please do check out the description for your other readings. There is the weekly general outlook, the, uh, the weekly love outlook, um, the 2020 general outlook for you. But uh, in general, for March, my lovely Virgos, this is going to be a month of really healing, cleaning house, getting your inspiration back, putting your best foot forward in an area where perhaps you have not been working so much or not been putting your best efforts in, you definitely have inspiration coming in by the end of the month, certainly. And there's a lot of work for you here to do to sort of bring everything back to the path that you want. The chariot is all about refocusing on the path for you. And so it just seems like here with regard to your work or career, there just needs to be uh, some changes, boundaries need to be put in place, and definitely a good strategy in thinking going forward. If there are people coming into you who can help you, who have the wisdom, and who are aligned with your ethos and mentality, then certainly, uh, you know, you should uh, avail yourself of their advice. All right, guys, for right now, have a wonderful, wonderful March, and I shall see you next month for your abundance and career outlook. Bye-bye now. <laughs>